another exciting project day for Epiphany. Let me show you what we're doing. How about Gordon tell us? What are we doing, Gordon? Yeah, today we're going to uh, begin installing this, uh, this Maxwell uh, vertical rope chain windlass on the uh, aft of the ship. And it's going to uh, be able to pull the chain up and drop it right into the chain locker, which is going to save us a lot of uh, hand pulling and back breaking work. Oh, also, you can let the anchor out just as easily. So, uh, mechanical thing we've been meaning to put on. It should work well with the new rollers that have been installed. Should do and good. here she is in the box. All the major components. There's the chain winch, the electric motor, controllers, control box. Bought it as a complete unit. And we'll get the template out because we got to cut a hole in the deck for it to fit through. So let's put more holes in the boat. We've got the template out of the RC-10 Maxwell chain windlass manual. And this is the cutout template that I've got to go up on the deck and line up. And This will be where the winch assembly protrudes through the deck and the motor will be mounted underneath. And this is the drop hole for the chain after it goes around the windlass and the four mounting bolt holes. So let me go up front and lay that out and we'll drill some holes in the boat. So we're up on the bow with our template, looking at our alignment, and I want to go inside the anchor locker and then locate this entry for chain, because the new chain entry is going to be here when it wraps around the winch, and locate that and make sure there's nothing under the deck there to obstruct my work, and see where that falls in the anchor locker. Okay, this is the inside of the anchor locker. And you can see the chain entry here, and you can see the four bolts for that loop up on the front, and you can see it's all clear space here. Uh, back to this guide track uh, behind the chain entry, so I got plenty of room to mount this with any alignment that I see will work best. But uh, to get the drop of the chain that you need for it not to pile up, I'm going to have to mount it somewhere back here so that uh, it'll have room to drop. So that's what I want it to confirm back here in the chain locker before I laid it out up top. I think this is going to be the layout I'm going to use. I've got a couple challenges here. There's an elevation difference between the bow spread in the front of the boat because it's not factory and I had to go with the lines of the angles I could use. I could space that up higher, uh, but that would weaken it because it would create a cantilever effect. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this alignment and the chain drop is going to be slightly behind this one, which I showed you from the inside, to the right side or starboard side of the locker. So I can put a divider in the locker. This side's for chain. This will be for rope for the second anchor, which is currently piled up back there. And that will tidy all that up. And to meet this challenge with alignment and elevation, I will build a roller and mount it right here to bring the chain up and over and guide it in line. And I think that's going to be the easiest way for me to solve this dilemma and make it functional. Now to make sure we start in the center of the holes, we chip them, which chips the gel coat, with our spring-loaded center punch. Puts a little dent in the fiberglass so that the drill bit starts in the center of the hole and does not wander. And of course we got the vacuum to catch all these fiberglass shavings. Mm. 
All right, I'm back in the anchor locker and you can see I've taped a garbage bag up to the deck there. It's, I'm hoping it'll catch all the fiberglass shavings and all for when I cut these holes out so they're not floating around the boat. We'll see how that works. It's the moment of true. No turning back now. <laughs> One hole cut, and you can see this is a cord deck. It's about an inch thick. It's layers of fiberglass with balsa wood in between. Give it that I-beam like construction for strength. But it makes it lighter, so it makes it faster. This boat's a racer. And the trash bag is doing its job, catching all that fiberglass and wood. So let's get this other hole cut out. And the holes for the Maxwell RC-10. Windless, anchor cranker for short, are done. Now we just gotta pick up the aluminum plate. It's gonna be the reinforcement underneath and uh, cut it out and then we'll be ready to mount. So we stopped by the metal supermarket to purchase, boom, aluminum plate, 18 by 18 square quarter inch thick this will be the backing plate for the windlass and I'll have to cut out the holes and mounting stuff so it go underneath the deck to reinforce the deck because this windlass will pull like 15,000 pounds of pull so we got to reinforce the deck of the boat here's the next step in our installation of our RC 10 Maxwell chain windlass is making a backing plate that'll go underneath the deck to reinforce the deck where this bolts down because it's got a tremendous amount of torque and pull. So, see I got the pattern laid out on it for the holes in the deck and then we'll trim it to fit once we get this drilled and cut out. Well, I don't have a hole saw this big, so I'm using this jigsaw and I'm not perfect, but that's just a hole for the chain to go through, and as long as it's big enough for the winch to fit through, it don't have to be perfect. It's got to be functional. The moment of truth is here. This is the Maxwell RC-10. Chain windlass. Chain goes in here, wraps around, drops out this hole here into the chain locker. This is where it goes through the deck, and I've made this backing plate. So let's see how the backing plate fits before I fit it up for trimming the way I want it to fit inside the locker. And it fits! So, I'll go put the windlass through the holes in the deck on the front and go inside and put this up, put a couple nuts on it to hold it in place uh, and trace out where I want to trim it to fit inside the chain locker. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see how she fits in the deck holes. Perfect fit. And that's how she's going to look on the deck. And the chain will come in it like that, wrap around, drop through the hole. So let's go down and fit the backing plate. And here we go. This is the final shape of the backing plate. I took it up in the uh, anchor locker, fitted it. The holes are perfect. Well, they might not look perfect, but they're perfectly functional. And I just trimmed this edge off to clear around some obstructions from intruding through the deck to attach a slider rail for sails adjustment. So this is what we'll bolt up underneath. So let's get our butyl tape and our gasket and go seal the top side. Epiphany's strength comes from its revolutionary balsa cord haul. The balsa's in the middle with a layer of fiberglass top and bottom, giving it strength, much like the flanges of an I-beam with the web in between. And to protect that, where I cut these holes in the neck, I'm sealing that balsa wood with 3M 
5200 sealant. Before I mount the windlass with the gasket and of course butyl tape, butyl tape. Did I say I'm using butyl tape? So let's get this balsa wood sealed up and then we'll work on getting the butyl tape down. There she is. That'll be her home. Uh, you can see the butyl tape oozing out around the edges as I tighten it down. Uh, you'll see more. I'll come up and clean it up later. But the Maxwell RC10 8 millimeter chain, which we have 300 foot of stainless steel chain. Winch is in place. Now let me go in the anchor locker and put the backing plate on and snug her up. And this is our backing plate that will go up against the deck. So let's turn it this way. And I'm going to have to put the camera down because this is kind of a tight spot and I need two hands. So let me get it in place and then we'll show you what we got. All right, the backing plate is in place. Got all our nuts and washers and all on. Let's run them up as far as the socket will take them. And we'll have to finish up with a wrench. The socket ain't that deep. One. Two, just making sure they're all snug. I got all the deflection out of the backing plate. Three, just make them equally tight. Four, and there she is. The winch is installed. Now the gear case goes on the bottom and the motor goes on the gear case. And then we got to do some wiring. So one step at a time. Booyah! We have the 90 degree gearbox installed on the windlass and the electric motor. So all of the mechanical installation is complete. Uh, now comes the actual hard part <laughs> is the wiring, which doesn't sound hard, but I've got to run two lengths of two alt cable to get the amperage I need up here nearly 40 feet through this channel where the hull and the uh, deck of the boat bolt together all the way from where you see them door at the back of the boat to get power up here to run this windlass. Uh, uh, I think I'll work on uh, installing the control panels up here on this bulkhead first and get what I call the small wiring done. And then work on getting the big cables here. Because I also want to run a set of wires to put a remote switch back at the helm for one-man operation. So, let's move on to the next task. We're starting the installation of the wiring. And the first component will be the one closest to the battery. And it'll be the breaker for the entire circuit. And it's got to be within 5 feet six feet of the battery five times 12 is 60 so six feet so we're going to locate it here's the battery box and the battery we're hooking to will be right there to start a battery so we'll go through this bulkhead here with the wiring come off the back to where we can hook it up back here and this is the breaker so it's going to fit right here where it's accessible and uh, we're going to use a hole saw because it fits the components on the back of the switch pretty good put a hole here to mount it so let's get started on that And it's a perfect fit. Uh. 
and once the cushion's in place, it kind of conceals the breaker, so it's out of the way. But I know where it is. It's easy to access. And the back side has easy access and short wire runs through the bulkhead to the battery. So I'm happy that project is complete. This is the relay box which controls the windlass. You energize the solenoids in there and you get forward and you get reverse. And we're mounting it up here in front of the locker. So that it'll be dry on this side of the chain locker. And the wires will be all the way up top because we have plans to convert this V-berth one day into a living space. So, let's get this drilled in here. I'm back on the bow of the boat to install the foot switches to operate the windlass so you can hold on to the handrails and safety lines in case it's a little rough and operate the winch with your foot. And these switches, you can orient them. This one will have the arrow for raising the winch and the arrow will point down on this one to lower the winch and they have a cover that snaps over them like that so if you accidentally step on them it won't trigger the winch and you close the cover like this to keep from accidentally triggering the winch and you can press it with your toe or you can open it up and step on it with your foot and this will wire into the control box and activate the winch so let me Get these exactly where I want them, and we'll drill some holes and mount them. All right, got the holes drilled, got the first switch in. I'll run the wires down. Through the hole. There we go. And just feed it in there. Now those will drop out in the anchor locker and they'll have to be traced out and sent to the uh, control box. Finish feeding the wire in and I had to make the hole a little bigger for those two little protrusions there where the wires come out because I didn't want to put any stress on the wires. So once the wires are in and that sits centered in the hole. It's just a matter of aligning the caps so you know what direction it is. And I might have to paint these or something to make them more obvious, but I'll remember left is up. Or I'm going to make left crank it in, right crank it out. So now i got to butyl tape the covers and screw them down over it. So let's butyl tape. There we go, we got the butyl tape down. Did I say butyl tape? Yeah, we use butyl tape for all protrusions through the deck above the water line. Butyl tape, butyl tape, butyl tape. Use butyl tape. And then the cover goes over top and snaps into the rubber grommets. And then I'll put the the four screw holes in, or the four screws in the screw holes. Get my English squared away there. Okay, now let's get the drill and the screws and mount these down. Another phase of the windlass project complete. We've got the control buttons. You push them through the hole with your finger or flip them up, step on them with your foot. This will raise the anchor, this will lower the anchor. Now, let the wiring begin. Let the wiring rig begin. That's a 100 foot roll, minus a little bit I used wire up an inverter. A 2O cable. We need 2O to carry that voltage, mostly amperage, uh, 35 feet up to the winch motor and 35 feet back, so a total 70 feet. So this is the minimum size we can use. And you can see, 
as big around as a finger. And our first wire is going to go from the positive of our starter battery, AGM, through this bulkhead. We'll have to drill a hole. Actually, I'm going to drill two because i got to return. And we're going to wire up the 75 amp breaker for the winch. And you can see the post on the back here. So let's get the drill out, get some access holes, and uh, pull some wire. We're going to be drilling this hole with the hole saw so that the cables are not trapped by the fittings in case I need to pull them. So that's the size I'm going to use. Before we crimp these cable ends on, we're going to give them a good coating of dielectric grease to prevent any corrosion in the future. And this professional grade cable crimper exerts many, 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 many tons of pressure crimping these on. And once the end's crimped on, we're using heat shrink to seal it in addition to the dielectric grease to prevent the corrosion. So let's fire the torch up. And there she is. Ends attached. It's all corrosion proofed and heat shrunk. Let's do the other end. That was fairly simple. Getting that through the bulkhead to the back of the breaker. Now the one from here has got to go back through this bulkhead, through this bulkhead, through this bulkhead here, through that cabinet, that bulkhead, that bulkhead, five or six more all the way to the front. So. It's going to be a battle. We've taken a roll of 2-0 cable. Look at the size. <laughs> That's what it takes to make a 70-foot run. you got to count the distance there and back to get the amperage. Almost as big as my thumb. And unrolled it to get all the kinks out of it. All the way up the deck to the windlass way up on the front in front of that hatch and now we're just going to loop it around the deck here and get it ready to pull through the bulkheads without any kinks or twists in it it's time to drill some more holes in the boat got our hole saw all this cable has got to originate in the battery box here, run through this bulkhead, through a bulkhead there, through bulkheads here, and go all the way to the V berth. So let's get to drilling. We're what are we doing, Gordon? Through the bulkheads, I'm trying to get it back to the. Uh, the anchor cranker. Yep. Pull her through. We're going through these two bulkheads right now. And we just keep bulkhead to bulkhead. Is that it? Nope. Keep going. Alright. Hang on. I'll put this down so I can feed it. We've got the two O cables for the battery. Run all the way up to the V-berth from the back of the boat. Bulkhead through bulkhead through bulkhead. And now we're going to wire in the solenoid control box uh, with positive battery power. That's where that one goes, right here. And our negative side goes to the center post on the motor. And F1 and F2 will get a leg to go back up here and tie in. F1 and F2 here 
and then the control wires go here. So let's get the crimping cables and make this wiring happen. Well, the hard part's done. The 2-0 cable is on the solenoid box, goes through the bulkhead into the anchor locker, and to the windlass motor, and it's all secure. So now, it's control wire time. Let me get some uh, different tools and we'll get on that. All the electrical work is done. So let's test. Whee, there she goes. That's up. That's down. Our anchor windlass is working. Now, got to get all this chain out of the locker and feed it through the windlass back down in through the locker port over here. So let's get to work on that. Now, to prevent us from ever losing the anchor chain, I've put a D-link on it, and I'm going to put it on that bolt. And that bolt goes to the angle brackets on the other side of the hall that hold the reinforcement for the bow spread. Let's get her good and tight. Arrgh. There, now we can never lose the anchor chain. Now that the chain's secure in the locker, let's slack the clutch off and just let it free fall out of the locker. There, and now the chain is tight in the locker to the anchor point and we'll start marking the chain with stop marks so that we don't ever let it out to the uh, stop in the locker again. Now we got the anchor chain marked at the max. That's 300 feet of chain out. We can bring in the extra chain from where we're anchored now. We got about 250 feet out. I don't think these zip ties are going to last long, but we'll just let them get chewed up on their own. You can also see the alignment issue I have. I have some rollers coming to lift this chain up. Uh, and it's just the way the boat's configured and the way I built it. We'll put rollers out there to get over that and be fine. And last but not least, we use the chain shackle and put a chain stopper here. This has got a plate underneath the deck. It's real secure. And uh, that's one last fail safe to prevent the winch from being loaded should the snubber rope fail. You can see the chafe protection on the snubber rope. And that's got all the tension of the boat on anchor. And the chain is hanging free. So, windless project complete! Okay, the divider's in. I got distracted, messed up my cut a little bit back there, but who cares? Functionality. It's good and sturdy. It'll keep the chain and the rope separated. So the rope will go port, chain will go starboard. Let's go reel some chain and rope in here. And this is how we crank anchor chain now. Just put your toe on the switch. Hear that? Got to adjust the clutch. Tighten the clutch up. Just put this handle in here and give it a little turn. And there she goes again. Okay, as you can see, the chain falls in nicely. We may have to put a board here to catch it all, but we're going to close that access off anyway. And now we have our anchor rope secured with a shackle and some flat washers underneath that bolt and a bowling, so you never lose it. So let's go stuff some rope. And we've added 30 feet of 3 8 galvanized chain 
to the rope road anchor and you can see she's pretty darn full. I had to use the boat hook and push it down three, four times to get it all in there. But now we got 60 feet of chain and 280 feet of road on this uh, anchor. 300 feet of chain on that one. And both are secure. Now we'll go rig our third anchor. Project complete! Absolutely going to need to put a door on this. <laughs> because the port side is full! But it's nice to have a working windlass and two ready anchors on the bowsprit. We're done!